This is part 70 of ASP.NET MVC tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss authorize and allow anonymous action filters. In ASP.NET MVC, by default, all the controller action methods are accessible to both anonymous and authenticated users. If you want your action methods to be available only for authenticated and authorized users, then use authorize attribute. Let's understand this with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Here I have a blank ASP.NET MVC4 application. Let's go ahead and add a controller. And let's call it Home Controller. And let's add two action methods to this controller. And let's call the first one as Secure Method. Let's go ahead and add another action method. And let's call this Non Secure Method. And let's go ahead and add respective views as well. And let's call the first view as secure method. This should add secure method view. And similarly, let's go ahead and add non secure method view. All right, at this point, we have two action methods within the home controller and their respective views. Now let's go ahead and deploy this MVC demo project to local IIS. And to do that, right click on the project name within Solution Explorer, select properties, and within the properties window, click on a web tab scroll down and select this radio button use local IIS web server and then before we click on this create virtual directory button let's open IIS and to do that click on start type run and hit enter that should open up run window within run window type inet mgr click ok that should open IIS expand the root server node in IIS and then sites and then default website and look at that at the moment we don't have a virtual directory with this name MVC demo let's click on this button the virtual directory was successfully created click OK now let's come back to IIS and refresh this default website notice that we have MVC demo select that and then click on this authentication icon Look at that, by default, anonymous authentication enab is enabled, which means anonymous users will be able to access all the actions within your controller. Okay, now let's also enable Windows authentication. And to do that, select Windows authentication and click this enable link. So at the moment, we have anonymous and Windows authentication enabled. All right, let's go ahead and build the solution. And let's fire up a browser window and try to navigate to secure method and non-secure method and see if we are able to access them. So let's go to secure method. And look at that, I'm able to access that. And similarly, let's try and access non-secure method. So at the moment, we are able to access both secure and non-secure method. Now let's say this secure method, as the name states, it's secure, and I don't want anonymous users to be accessing that. I want only authenticated users to be able to access that method. So how do we achieve that? Simply decorate that with authorize attribute. Let's build the solution. And now let's try to navigate to non-secure method and see if we are able to access it. Now we should be able to access it as normal. Look at that, I'm still able to access that. But the moment I try to navigate to secure method, look at what's happening. It's saying authentication is required. So we need to provide a valid Windows username and password. Otherwise, look at this, if I don't provide any username and password, if I click cancel, look at what's gonna happen. We get an error, 401 unauthorized access is denied due to invalid credentials okay on the other hand if we try to provide a valid uh, windows user account credentials then we should be able to access that method okay and to do that you know let's say on my computer let's right click on this computer select uh, manage so this should open up computer management and then navigate to local users and groups and look at this, I've got several Windows user accounts here. Now let's say we want to use the TAN account and then access, uh, you know, secure method. So TAN is the username and then the respective password. Look at that, I, since I am authenticated now, I am able to access secure method. Okay, now look at this, we have applied this attribute at the 
action method level but we can also apply it at the controller level and look at this the moment we apply it to the controller then it is applicable for all the actions within that controller so let's build the solution let's close this browser open another instance and try to navigate to home and secure method so it should prompt me for the credentials. Let me click cancel. And let me try to go to non-secure method. And again, it should still prompt because we have applied this authorized attribute at the controller level. So all action methods basically require authentication. OK, now let's say this is non-secure method. I want to allow anonymous users to be able to access that. Okay, since we have applied this authorized attribute at this level, you know, at the moment, both of these methods, you know, they require authentication to access them. But then, you know, I want non-secure method to be available for anonymous users as well. So to overwrite, you know, whatever setting this authorized attribute is enforcing, you know, I can simply decorate this non-secure method with allow anonymous attribute. Let's pull this. Let's cancel that and let's fire up another instance of the browser. Let's navigate to non-secure method. And we should be able to access that without providing the authentication details. Look at that. And if we go back, if we try to go to secure method, it will still ask for the credentials. OK, so allow anonymous attribute uses to skip authorization enforced by the authorized attribute. On this slide, you can find a link to my YouTube playlist where you can find all the videos in a logical sequence. You also have a link to my blog where you can find the code samples and text version of all the videos. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.